Teaching students to use the passive voice means that I teach both its form and its function. When I teach the passive voice, I generally observe among my students a belief that they should always prefer to use passive voice over active voice in a research article, since it sounds more formal. However, as Professor Gray mentioned, language users choose a particular grammar form to carry out a particular function. To illustrate this, I use the corpus to have students notice those functions by exploring the instances of passive voice in different article sections from their own disciplines and noting down their observations. This screenshot, for example, shows an instance of passive voice in the methods section of an article from the animal science discipline. After that mini exploration, I asked them to discuss their findings with someone from a different discipline. What students generally find is that passive voice is most commonly used in method sections when describing the study procedures. In the example, passives appear throughout the description. For example, dairy cows were used, cows were paired, a diet was administered, a diet was given, the concentrate was replaced, and the concentrate was increased. The many passive patterns in the methods section support the purpose of describing the study procedure. What matters is the set of steps and the materials, and passive voice helps highlight these. Who uses the cows, administers the diet, and increases the concentrate is less important, and the grammar helps to express this. What students also discover when sharing their findings with their partners is that passive voice is used more commonly in fields like engineering and physics compared to social science fields like applied linguistics and business. This function-focused exploration provides a nice springboard for students to do a more form-focused analysis using a corpus tool like COCA. I will show one in the next video.